Number 51. Starting with equations this and this, for conservation of momentum in the x and y directions and assuming that one object is originally stationary, prove that for an elastic collision of two objects of equal masses, this equation. All right. So uh, first thing is, uh, you might have noticed these patterns before, uh, at least for this equation up here, this is basically the conservation of momentum uh, for an elastic collision in the x direction, and this one is in the y direction. All right, and this one probably might not look so familiar, and what we're going to try to do basically is manipulate these two equations, all right, so that it yields this equation. That's our job. Okay, so... There's a couple of ways uh, to think through this. I think um, none of them easy, by the way. <laughs> so I'd say the easiest of the hard ways to do this uh, is probably going to uh, be to pick out that a lot. Of, there are a lot of squared terms in our desired equation over here. All right, we got all the velocities being squared, um, and we even have. I mean, this isn't a squared velocity, but it's v1 times v2. And then also knowing this cosine of theta 1 minus theta 2, knowing that this really, in terms of your trig identities, um, this uh, involves the cosine of theta 1 times the cosine of theta 2, right? plus the sine of theta 1 times the sine of theta 2. Okay, those, uh, this and what I just wrote there are uh, identical to one another. So... You know, noticing these patterns, what I'm going to start by doing is actually I'm going to start by squaring both of these original terms. Okay, I'm going to square both of them. So let me rewrite them down here at the bottom. Okay, I'm going to change um, some of the uh, notation just because I'm used to doing before and after. Instead of using the prime, I'm going to code the prime represents after. I'm going to use an A, right, for after. Um, so let me just rewrite the first equation. So it's M1 v1 basically b right or before the collision and that should equal then m1 uh, v1 a uh, times the cosine of theta 1 plus then m2 v2 a times the cosine of theta 2. okay by the way they also say that um, uh, the masses are going to be the uh, the same right because it says equal masses here so we can, instead of writing M1, write an M2, we can just write M. Okay, so that's actually what I'm going to do now. So let me just erase the ones here. All right, for the, from the masses, that is. I'm going to leave all the other subscripts alone. So let's now square this whole equation, right? If we square the whole equation, we have to essentially square both sides. So I square that side, the left side that is, and I'll square this side. Uh, this one is fairly, I mean, straightforward, right? You can just see that that's M squared v1b squared, okay? And then this second term in here, you know, think about it as if you had this is one term and this is another. So it's basically saying something like, how would you perform, you know, this? Right, it'd be simply a squared plus ab, excuse me, plus 2ab plus b squared, right? That's the general uh, format there. So I'm just going to apply that general format, right? You're foiling essentially to this uh, binomial in here. This whole thing is my A and this whole part is my B. All right. So when we do that, let me just get a, I'm going to probably just move this over a little bit. I think it's going to, equation is going to get a little long. Um, so when we do that here, right, we, we're going to have M squared, then it's going to be V1A squared times then cosine theta 1 squared. Okay. Uh, plus then our middle term, which would be taking this uh, A term and multiplying it by my B term. So M times M, right? That would be M squared. V1A times V2A is just V1A, V2A. And then cosine theta 1 times cosine theta 2 is just cosine theta 1 times cosine theta 2. All right, cosine, cosine theta 1 times cosine theta 2. And what I want to note, or what I want you to note already is look at this. Cosine theta 1 cosine times cosine theta 2. Here's cosine theta 1 times cosine theta 2. All right, so we're getting somewhere already. And then finally, finishing it on out, I have to square this term at the end. So that's basically going to be m squared v 2 a squared cosine theta 2 squared. Okay, so that should take care of the first equation. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing for the uh, second equation. I'm going to square this whole term. Okay, so let me uh, rewrite that. So it's going to be 0 is equal to uh, mv1a times the sine of theta 1, and then plus m2. I, I'm not going to write the 2, right, because all the m's are the same. v2a times the sine of theta 2. And guess what? We're going to square everything again, so square the left, square the right. Okay, so this is just 0, right, and that's going to now equal, again, here's my a and here's my b. I'm going to do the same pattern, okay? So this is m squared, v1a squared, sine theta 1 squared. Okay, plus then, and I missed something up here, I just realized, because I'm doing the equation again. I needed a 2 there in front, right? I f over here, guys, I forgot my 2 in my middle term, right? I wrote it over here and I forgot it. So let me just erase this m squared. The m squared is fine. It just should be 2 m squared, okay? And, uh, okay, so that works now. Um, and now let me continue on down here. Just change the color. All right, so now that's going to be 2 m squared v1a times v2a times then sine of theta 1 time, uh, times the sine of theta 2. And notice, now I got this second half of that trig identity. Okay, and then finally, just squaring the second b term here, that's going to be m squared v2a squared times the sine of theta 2 squared. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this equation so I can write these two next to one another. So I'm going to erase this equation now. Okay, I'm going to bring this equation on up. And we're going to add these two equations together. Okay, so what I want you to notice is I'm basically adding, you know, here's one term, here's another term, right? Here's the middle term there, and then here's the last. Okay, so I'm going to add these two together. I'm going to get an overall equation now, okay? So this plus zero is obviously just itself, so that that is, I'll draw a little line here. This is going to be m squared v, oops, one second. This is m squared v1b squared. And that will equal now. So now when we're adding these, these two terms together, and this could be a little confusing, but notice that, you know, these two values are the same. And the, the two terms differ based on the position, or not the position, but the value of those two. Okay, so what I mean by that is, uh, this, this would be similar to saying something, call this one variable and this another variable, uh, but the same variable, meaning that it'd, it'd be similar to saying something like x times 5, you know, plus x times 7. How would you do that? Well, you're like, I can do it two ways. I, this could be x times 12, or you could have written it x times 5 plus 7, right? That's actually what I'm going to do. This is the 5 and this is the 7, essentially. So I'm going to write it in this form, okay? So now, uh, that being the case, it's going to be m squared v1a squared, parentheses, cosine of theta 1 squared. It's the whole thing squared, not the theta. Uh, plus then sine of theta 1 squared. Okay, close up the parenthesis. Okay, let me just already move this on over. One second. Okay, now I'm going to get to the second term here, right? So again, same thing, don't add the twos together, okay, because I'm going to pull them out as a common factor, all right? So uh, this whole thing, if you notice this and this are the same. So I'm going to do the same technique, okay? So there's going to be plus 2m squared v1a times v2a, and now parentheses, this term plus that term. Okay, so cosine of theta 1 times the cosine of theta 2 plus the sine of theta 1 times the sine of theta 2. Okay, now moving this equation on over even a little more. I'm just going to finish it on out. Oh, moving the line too, oh well. Okay, finally, the last term over here I'm going to add. Okay, same thing. Notice these two are the same, so I'm going to factor that out essentially. So it's m squared v2a squared times cosine uh, theta 2 squared 
plus the sine of theta 2 squared. Okay? Now, we're basically there. All right? Isn't this a lovely equation? Uh, we got to remember one other trig identity. Okay? Remember this trig identity. I'm going to write it up on the uh, top right. Remember that the uh, sine of an angle squared, you can write the square term there above the sine, or you can have this in parentheses and have the sine there. It doesn't matter. They're both the same. But the uh, sine of an angle squared plus the cosine of an angle squared will equal 1. Okay? So notice where that is in my equation. That's here, and it's also here. So that whole thing drops out to 1. So this basically, I can just kind of put a little slash through it, right? That drops out. And then, what's under, or what's inside of this parenthesis? Notice, it's exactly this term over here on the upper left-hand side. And we said that, and I said before, that this term is equivalent to this term. Okay? So what that means is I'm going to now plug this term on in. Okay, for this term. All right, let's do it. So now... We got m squared v1b squared is equal to m squared v1a squared. This whole thing dropped out. Uh, plus this thing, 2m squared v1, oops, v1a, v2a, times then, right, the cosine of theta 1 minus theta 2. Okay, plus then this thing, m2 v2a squared, right? And that whole term just dropped out. So now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting really close. Now what I want you to notice in terms of the overall equation here, okay, this term is this one, okay? Not, not identical yet, but we're going to get there, okay? This term is this one. This next term is the third one, and then the last one in the equation is the middle one that I have over here. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, first, notice that I have just m in here. Not m squared, but m. Okay? So we have m in this term, m in this term. right? I mean, we have m squared in this term, m squared, m squared, and m squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce all of them by 1. Okay, so I cancel, basically I factor out an m from everyone. Okay, so now it's not m squared anymore, it's just m. Okay, and uh, let's write that result now. Okay, we'll take this part in steps. So this is going to be m times v1b squared is equal to m times v1a squared. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this into the second position, right, and this whole term into the third position, just because that's how it is in the uh, overall answer. And now this is plus m v two a squared plus then two m v one a times v two a times then the cosine of theta one minus theta two. Okay, so we're basically right there, right? Now all we need to do is figure out how do we get the halves. Well, notice that I have a half term here, half term here, half term here, and then in this last term. Right, let me just erase the circle so we can see that maybe a little better. Okay. Oop. So notice in the last term, though, there's only a coefficient of 1. And in here, I have a coefficient of 2. So basically, what do we have to do? We've got to divide this whole equation right, by 2. Okay, And when we do that, we basically put a half coefficient in front of all the terms. So I'm going to do that on the upper left now. So now it becomes 1 half m v1b squared is equal to half m v1a squared. Let me write this actually a little smaller. Sorry, guys. One second. Just not a lot of room, right? Um, half m v1b squared equals half m v1a squared plus half m v1b squared, uh, excuse me, v2a squared. And then last but not least, last but not least, it's this last term, right, without the 2. 
just m v1a times v2a times the cosine times the cosine of of theta 1 minus theta 2. And guess what? There it is. There's the equation. Okay, that is identical now to this. Ah. It's kind of meditative, right? Not really. Guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. All right, thanks for sticking with me on this one. Please remember to subscribe, and I look forward to helping you with the next question. Have a great day.